There is only one sure way to get home safely from this year's Fiesta events. Don't get behind a wheel if you've had anything to drink. Call a cab or bring a designated driver. And what about those portable breathalyzers you can buy now that claim to be able to tell you if you are still safe to drive? News 4 troubleshooter Jay Avila put some of those devices to the test, and he joins us live at Castle Hills PD to give us the results. Jay? Well, Delane and Randy, this is the room you never want to find yourself in. This is where Castle Hills police bring suspected drunk drivers to give them breathalyzer tests. And this is the intoxilizer that they use. You can see here, this is the mouthpiece that you have to blow into. This machine is calibrated regularly and the results are admissible in court. But we wondered about these mini breathalyzers that you can buy on the internet now. How would they perform? Well, you're about to find out. Let's not lose sight of why we're talking about this. The idea is to prevent tragedies like the one that happened to Danny Slape. 14 years ago, he was struck by a drunk driver while walking on the street. He almost died from his injuries, and to this day, he needs to post stick -it notes around his apartment to remind him to do simple things like turn off the oven or lock the front door. DWIs are 100% preventable. Nobody wants to live like I live. Could these personal breathalyzers help prevent crashes by warning drivers when it's no longer safe to get behind the wheel? We bought four of them on the internet. They range in price from $116 down to $25 for this one that goes on your keychain. Assisting us with the test is Corporal Jose Davila, I want you to turn a series of who's been steps. running intoxilizer tests for Castle Hills PD for nine years. First, Davila has our two test subjects in blow in into the intoxilizer before they drink any alcohol. Just like that, keep going, keep going, keep going. Sure enough, the results show no alcohol in their systems. They're all at zero. And we do the same with the breathalyzers we purchased. All show their blood alcohol levels at zero. Our female volunteer will be drinking five ounce glasses of wine. The male, 12 ounce bottles of beer. In less than an hour, our wine drinker finishes two glasses and the other volunteer has polished off three beers. Time for the first test. Right, we begin with the police intoxilizer. Remember, the legal limit is .08. How do you feel? Tell me, tell me where you think you are. I feel like I would be halfway to over the legal limit. She's pretty close. The intoxilizer shows her blood alcohol content at .04, about halfway to legal intoxication. The male subject tests a little lower at .03. Now to test the breathalyzers we bought. Surprisingly, the first three give higher readings than the police intoxilizer. The keychain model even shows our volunteers already at the legal limit of .08. Only the last device, a breathalyzer that plugs into your iPhone, failed to detect the presence of alcohol. And this one says I have a blood alcohol level of zero. We followed the directions, but we couldn't well, get up. that model to take a reading. Corporal yeah. Davila says that's one of the problems with self-testing. If we're having trouble working a device, how difficult would it be for someone who's drunk? My personal take on it is if you have to resort to using an instrument like that, then you obviously shouldn't be driving. We moved on to the next round of testing. The volunteers keep drinking until the female subject has finished four glasses of wine and her companion, six bottles of beer, all within a two hour period. I think I'm close. I, I don't think I'm over the limit, but I, I'm seven, nine. I'm, I'm probably close. That's what they all say. You know that. Sure, sure. <laughs> this time, the police intoxilizer shows they're both legally drunk. A reading of .09 for her and .081 for him. And just like before, three of the breathalyzers we purchased showed readings that were even higher. The white one here put her blood alcohol level at .11 and his at .10. Once again, the iPhone breathalyzer was the only device to give a result that was too low. It shows the female subject at only .05 and the male volunteer at zero, even though they're both over the legal limit.
Apple doesn't make that device. We tried contacting the company that sold it to us, but we got no response. A company called Backtrack, which makes two of the devices we tested, told us, We've done user research and found that simply by owning and using a breathalyzer, it reduces the incidence of impaired driving because you're talking about it and are aware of your alcohol level. That's something Danny Slape agrees with. If they're accurate, I think they'd be great if you can get people to use them. As for our volunteers, we gave them a ride home. Otherwise, they would have spent the night as Corporal Davila's guests. So three of the four breathalyzers did pretty well on the test. The manufacturers say they purposely calibrate these at the factory to be more sensitive and give higher readings. But over time, any breathalyzer is going to fall out of calibration and give inaccurate readings. So some give you the option to send the devices back to them to be recalibrated. Reporting live at Castle Hills PD, I'm News 4 Troubleshooter Jay Avila.